another curious story by The Whistler. Tonight, The Man Who Died Twice. the whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. It wasn't until a year or more after his second death that the public learned the facts in the case of Stash Wilk and made him famous posthumously as the man who died twice. That was an interesting story in itself, but it was really only a prologue to a bigger story, one which the public never knew in full. Four people were involved. Stash, his brother John, his lawyer Ben Maddow, and his girl Edie Shelby. But the real central character in the story was an oil drum containing $400,000 in currency buried near a lonely highway. Yes, Stash Wilk, if you hadn't been stupid, if you hadn't killed that bank guard, you might have made it. But there's no use crying over spilt milk, is there? You're in the state penitentiary now, in the death cell, 48 hours from the gas chamber. And all you can think of is the 400,000 buried in the oil drum near the highway, safe. Only you know where it is, Dash. Maybe that's why Ben Maddow, your lawyer, is trying so desperately to get you a reprieve. But listen to reason, Stash. I tell you, we saw the governor. They all turned us down. Uh, it must be some other way. Where's Edie? I gotta see her. She's coming with John. Hey, my brother? What's he doing here? Trying to help. You mean he's money-hungry, too, like the rest of you? Please, Stash, don't you see? You've got to tell us where that dough is so we can put it to work for you. Oh, right? you low-down... Oh, you, you, let me go, you crazy idiot. That guy's coming. Nobody gets you, a smell of that dough till I'm out, see? Yeah, yeah, Stash. Yeah. Oh, let me go. Yeah. <laughs> now, thanks. <clears throat> That's straighten your tie. They're coming. Miss Shelby and your brother to see you, Wilp. Ten minutes. Stash. Oh, Edie. Oh, I missed you, baby. Hope you'll miss me, too. I have, Stash. I have. It's getting so I figure everyone's got his eye on the dough. Even you. Oh, please. Okay. What's on your mind, Johnny? I abandoned you. Ask him about... I just told Ben exactly how I feel about the dough, Johnny. Just so there won't be no mistakes. You see, there's one thing worse than walking to that little green room tomorrow. That's walking there knowing someone else is making free with that 400 grand. In other words, John, he doesn't trust us. Right. Once I'm out, it's a different story, of course. Of course. Well, that leaves us just one alternative. What's that? It's a long shot, Stash, but that's about the only kind we have left. It'll take money. Now or later? I think you'll be satisfied with later. Who? The doctor. <laughs> Are you kidding? What good can a doc do me? Let him talk, Stash. It's this way, Stash. With the right injections, a man who's been gassed to death can be brought back to life. Brought back? What are you giving me? What kind of a double cross is this? Are you all crazy or something? Relax before you have the guard here. I'm telling you a plain fact. A man who's been gassed and pronounced dead can be revived, providing you get into the right doctor fast enough. Now, uh-oh. Uh... -oh. uh Cigarette, anyone? Yeah, yeah, I'll have one. Thanks. A little less noise now, huh? Yeah. Well, Stash, you ready to listen to details? I don't have much choice, do I? Okay, Johnny, I'm listening. But get this straight, the three of you. I don't do no talking about the 400 grand till I'm out of this pen. And you can figure how much talking I'll do if I come out dead. <laughs> Yes, Dash, it's enough to make a man think, isn't it, with death staring him in the face. The guards at the prison notice the change right away, and the report goes to the warden that with a little more than a day of life left you, you've changed from a surly, scowling brute into a model prisoner. 
Meanwhile, Ben Meadow and your brother John are making preparations. And finally, on the morning of the execution. What time is it, John? Almost five. That doctor was... Don't worry, I told you. He's got the schedule. You're sure of him? Positive. He's done it before. We have exactly an hour. He goes into the gas chamber at six sharp. Where's that laundry van? Outside. We'll get him. Hey, come here in a minute, will you? Yeah. You got everything straight? Yeah, I, I think so, Mr. Meadow. He goes into the chamber at 6. Ought to be out at 6.10. They'll take the body direct to the prison crematory. You meet the wagon at the southeast at exactly 6.13. You exchange that body in the sack in your truck for stash. Yeah, yeah, I know. Now, there can't be any slip-ups. The delay of a minute might make the difference between life and death. It's got to be split-second timing. You understand? Yeah. All right, get out and check your truck. And don't let the prison guard suspect this is anything but your usual laundry pickup. Right, boss. I'll be back at 620 sharp with the body. Laundry, man. Good. I'll give you a hand. Right through here. Okay. All right. Right here. On the table? Yeah. Yeah. Here's your money. Ah, thanks. Remember what I told you. Keep your mouth shut. Don't worry. All right, doctor. Let's go. Methylene blue. Here it is. Needle? Right. There. Oxygen on. On, doctor. Heart? Not yet. More methylene. Heart? I... I don't know yet. I can hardly tell. Give me that stethoscope. Here you are. Let's see. Wait a minute. Hmm. Give him more oxygen. He's starting to breathe, doctor. How's his heart? Easy, easy. Now, down on the oxygen a little. Steady, steady. He's really breathing. All right. Uh, we'll keep the oxygen on a little longer. Doctor, is he... Yeah, he's out of the woods. He'll live? He has an excellent chance. Cover him with a couple of blankets. How long before he'll wake? There's no way of telling yet. The main thing now is that he's alive. If his constitution is as strong as I think it is, he'll come through. <laughs> Now, back to the whistler. Four hundred thousand dollars is a lot of money, isn't it, Stan? It brought you back from the dead. Paid for the split-second timing, the calculated accuracy, the medical exactness that turned a one-way journey into a round trip. You remember nothing from the time the paralyzing fumes surrounded you as you sat strapped in the gas chamber. Nothing except a feeling of strangulation, the sudden stabbing of a million knives at your chest, and then darkness, a limitless ocean of darkness in which you lost all sense of time and space and being. Then all of a sudden, there's reality again. There's light coming in windows without bars on them. And Edie's here beside you. I can't believe it, Stash. Well, why not? I'm here, ain't I? Oh, I was scared. You were scared. <laughs> and help me up, baby. Try out these pins of mine. Yeah. There. There. Oh. Think you can walk? Walk? Maybe I can fly. Watch. Oh. Don't take it easy. I'm okay. Boy, he's walking. Huh? Hey, well, look at that. Not bad for a corpse, What huh? a great stash. Hiya, fellas. Well, when are we getting out of here? We're not getting out of here until we make sure there won't be a slip-up. What do you mean? We're going to find you a new face. Huh? A plastic surgeon, Stash. Uh, now, wait a it's minute. It's the only way. Your picture's been in every paper in the country. You'll be spotted in two minutes if you left this house. Uh, will it be uh, much of a job? 
$30,000 worth. <laughs> he must be good. He is. Okay, pay him. Let's get it over with. He wants it in advance. Well, lay it out. What's the matter? Ain't my credit good for 30 grand? You take it easy. We worked hard to get you this far, and we want to finish it, but we're broke. What are you giving me? What do you want? An itemized statement of how much it costs to buy your skin? All right, here it is. Five thousand each for the two attendants. A thousand for the other step. Fifteen hundred... Ah, you'll get it back with interest, you know that. Sure. We trust you, Stash. And what are you after? It isn't what we're after, it's what we've got to have. That four hundred thousand, or enough of it to buy the plastic surgeon and then get us all out of here. But it ain't safe for me to go after it. You said so yourself. That's right, I did, but... What about one of us? Or don't you trust us yet? Oh, I don't know. Let me think. And you don't trust them, do you, Stash? Because you know there's no honor among thieves. Still, you're not quite yourself today, are you? There's a new feeling inside you. The dictionary calls it gratitude. You don't recognize it. But it makes you feel a little like a heel doubting these people after they saved your life. But perhaps you can squirm out of it gracefully. Perhaps your brother... Johnny. Johnny, how about you? Can't you raise 30 grand for me? Right now, I couldn't raise yeast. I'm already out on a limb for part of the expenses. There's nothing we can do, Stace. We've gone through every cent we Ah, have. you said that. What about raising it? I tell you, my credit's good. It won't work. Who is this doc? Martin. He's a friend of mine. Then why won't he work in the cuff? He wouldn't believe me when I told him about the money you buried. Wouldn't believe you? Why not? I had nothing to show him. Why should he? You still don't trust us, do you, Stash? Wait a minute. You think you could convince this doc if I drew you a map? Now you're talking. Eh, I ain't finished. There's strings on this. Nobody does any digging till I'm ready to go with you. After the operation. But what about paying the doctor? I think I can sell him on it if I've got a map. He's afraid Stash will walk out on him. He's taking quite a chance, you know. It's all right with me, Stash. What about you, Ben? Nobody goes till I go with you, right? Okay. All right. Give me a paper and pencil. And right at this point, on the left side of the highway, there's an auto club road sign. At 20 yards from there, right on the line with this rock, you'll find an oil drum buried. See? Right there. You can't miss it. Thanks, Dash. Now you better run out and wrestle up that duck. I want to get... Ben! Get your hands up, Stash. Over against the wall. Hey, what's you going too, on? You two, John. Eat it. You're not going to let him do... Oh. So that's how it is, huh? That's how it is, Stash. I'll kill you, you little double cross. Get back to the wall, you... There. That's better. You always were hot-headed, Stash. She'll double cross you, too, the little... I don't think so. He wouldn't understand. Edie and I were patient, Stash. We knew what we were waiting for. And now that we've got it, there's no need to tolerate you or your brother any longer. And listen. You got a hundred grand coming to you. Knock me and Johnny off, you just wind up with a murder rap. And 300,000 more. Don't forget that. Yeah, a lot of good that'll do you when you're walking the last mile. Okay, that's right, ain't it, Johnny? Not exactly. There's no crime in killing a man who's already been executed. No, Johnny. Not you, too. Look, Maddo, you're the boss now. I'm only suggesting you haven't much to gain by rubbing me out. Ben, he's right. We don't want to spend the future ducking the cops. That's no worse than ducking Johnny Wilk. For what? I'm not sore. All I want is my hundred grand and you'll never see me again. Ben, it's the best way for us. Maybe you're right. Maybe it is smarter. Step out of the way, John. Ben, don't. Ben, for <laughs> <laughs> So Stash Wilk died twice, reducing membership in the corporation to three. Ben Meadow, John Wilk, and Edie Shelby, each with one eye on the 400,000 and the other on their partners. They're all jittery that night on the way to the spot Stash marked on the map. What are you trying to do, Edie? Kill us all? Don't jump at me. I saw the car. Well, don't drive so fast. You want to get there, don't you? Exactly. I want to get there. 
I can wait until tomorrow if I have to. Look, look, look. Why don't we just take it easy, huh? We, we can stop at a roadside hotel. I think it's crazy. You're outvoted. May as well slow down. All right, all right. That better? <laughs> you know, it's funny, Ben. Someday you'll probably fall and break your neck in a bathtub. <laughs> There's a place ahead. Pull in there, and I'll see if they have any rooms. Be right back. <laughs> he knows better than to leave it. Leave what? Oh, don't give me those sheep eyes, Edie. You had your eyes on his inside coat pocket ever since we left. And don't tell me you're in love with the old goat, neither. You're pretty sure of yourself. I know women. You know me? Yeah. That's nice. Could be a lot nicer with old Greybeard out of the way. Any ideas? A few. For example? Mighty nice layout here. All these second-story rooms with balconies. I don't get it. Just watch me. That's all I've been doing since we met. Sort of like it, Johnny. Watching you. Wait a minute. Here he comes. And hey, watch the dope, Ben. Just talk to the maitre d'. We can get dinner and rooms. Did you reserve the rooms? Not yet. I wanted to check with you first. That's great with me. Come on, Edie. Yeah, I was thinking we could pick up a couple of those view rooms on the second floor. With the balconies? Mm -hmm. Just what I had in mind. Look at that sky, will you? Well, what about it? Nothing. Except it is going to be a beautiful night, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Shall I serve some more wine? You, John? Ah, uh, no, no, no. Uh, Mr. Maddow and I'll have some more. Yes, ma'am. Good. Now you're talking to me. There you are. Hey. Will that be all? Yeah, that's all. Hey, hey wait. Just uh, leave the bottle. Huh? Yeah. Yes, sir. If you want anything else brought, uh, brought up, just ring. Hmm. Yeah. How's about another glass, everybody? We we got lots to celebrate tonight. Edie will keep you company. Hmm? Ah. I'm going to stretch my legs. Sir. Okay, Johnny. Uh, be careful, Ben. You're spilling. Yeah, it's a pretty elegant sweep. Venetian blinds. French windows. Pretty fancy, huh? Yeah. <sighs> a private balcony. Yeah. Nice and private. Well, I'll see you two later. Sure you won't have another drink? No, 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 thanks. Hmm. Oh, by the way, Edie, you were right about it being a beautiful night. You two really ought to have a look outside. I don't know why, but that guy gives me the woolies, Edie. I'm beginning to think I shouldn't have listened to you. Oh, forget to you, it, but... Ben. Tonight we celebrate, remember? <laughs> sure, sure, that's right. Why do you say we walk out on the balcony? Huh? I'm comfortable here. I'm just... Oh. <laughs> Knock my glass over. <laughs> It's all right, though. I emptied it first. Come on, Ben. A little fresh air will do us mm. both good. Here, I'll take your arm. No, 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 no. I feel fine. Mm. It's pretty out here, isn't it? Mm. You're pretty, Edie. You and me. We're going to have a great time, aren't we, huh? Why not? We'll have 300,000 bucks to keep us warm, Edie. <laughs> Anywhere we want to go. We go there. Anything we want to do, we do it, huh? I've been waiting a long time for a setup like this. So have I. Yeah. Oh, Ben, uh, look. Right in our backyard, a deer. Yeah? Oh, that's nice. Oh, look at him, Ben. He's cute. Huh? I don't see anything. Here. Here, get where I'm standing. Right by the rail. Huh? I still don't see anything. He's down under our balcony. You'll have to lean over to see him. <laughs> you sure it's not an elephant? A little pink one? <laughs> You're seeing things, Evie. Maybe we'd better go... Hey, hey, hey. God, what are you... Ah! To 
bad, Ben. You turned your back once too often, let your guard drop for one fatal instant, forgot for a second that you were dealing with big leaguers, members of the 400 Grand Association. Of course, John and Edie testified the next morning before the coroner's jury. And, of course, the verdict was... The deceased Benjamin Maddow met his death from an accidental fall while under the influence of alcohol. And, of course, the other guests of the hotel understood when Ben's fiancée and his best friend left immediately after the inquest. Of course. After all, lady, you couldn't bear to remain around the scene, could you? Not with Stash's 400,000 buried 50 miles away. We're going to have to be back there tomorrow. Huh? Why? We're not acting like a couple of grief-stricken friends. Somebody's got to claim the body. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you got something. How much farther? About a mile. Oh. We'll be there soon. <laughs> not at the rate you're driving. <laughs> mm. Nice, isn't it? Two of us alone. Yeah. There's a lot ahead of us with that 400 grand. There's a lot behind us, too. We can forget it. You think so? It'll be easy with you. You're a pretty interesting character, John Wilk. Yeah? Yeah. You've been in the racket, same as the rest of us, but you've never gotten your fingers dirty. How come? I use my head, I guess. For example, see this road? What about it? That's where we're going. I'm using my head. I don't get it. You will? Why are you turning off the highway? This isn't the place. Johnny, what are you doing? Answer me, Johnny. There's nothing here at all. Stop, Johnny. You'll drive us over the edge. See what I mean about using my head, baby? Johnny. Johnny, why are you getting out? Release the brake. Johnny, you can't. You heard me. Release the brake. All right. You know what he's doing, Edie. He's too smart to shoot you with that 38 he's holding. The shoulder of the road slopes down for about 10 feet. Then the cliff. They'll find you in the wrecked automobile and there'll be no telltale bullet hole. You're thinking fast. You've got one chance, haven't you? There, he's behind the car now to start it rolling down the slope. That's it, in reverse, quickly, run him over. I got him. You're going to have to turn around. It's narrow, but you've got to make it, Edie. That's right. Now, in reverse. You have to back close to that edge. You have to watch where you're going. Better take your eyes off John for a minute as he lies on the other side of the road. Johnny! No! Keep right on going, baby! Right on over! The Whistler will return with a strange ending of tonight's story in just a moment. Now, back to the Whistler. So the corporation is finally cut down to one. And you're it, aren't you, Johnny? It's been a hard struggle. Your chest is crushed, your right foot mangled. But there's something more important than that. You're just like Stash and Ben. Money comes before anything else. It's the thought of the 400,000 in the oil drum that gives you the strength to half walk, half crawl that last mile to the roadside. Yes, there it is. 50, 16, the 17, 18, 19, 20. Here, right here. Yes, John. This is the spot you've lied and betrayed and killed to reach. You don't care whether you live or die now. All you want is the sight of those greenbacks, isn't it? You look for something to dig with, a stick or a sharp stone. There's nothing. So you dig with your fingers, claw at the dirt, forget the pain in your hands, 
Every breath feeling as if you've inhaled a load of razor blades. But at last you reach it. The oil drum, just as Stash had said. The top comes off easily. There. No. Can't feel it. I'll light a match. Now. What's this? Where's the... Empty. Oh. No, I'm wrong. Can't be. Ah, here. A piece of paper. <laughs> Just like Stash. Must be another map. The dollar bill. Map, it must be a map. Sure, he's written directions. Whoever's double-crossed me. Keep this buck for your trouble. The rest of the 400 grand. I leave to the worm. Next Monday at 9 o'clock, The Whistler will bring you another strange tale. The curious story, Death Wears a White Robe. The Whistler is broadcast for your entertainment. This program, directed by George W. Allen, with tonight's story by Stanley Rubin, music by Wilbur Hatch. This is Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.